Good morning, folks. Falling under the Earth Spots hypothesis, our storms are much like sunspots. The similarities are endless, right down to the swirling clouds, and including the connections to earthquakes and Earth's version of a solar flare, the terrestrial gamma flash, a genuine Earth flare from Julio. Stepping away to the solar system shift, we've shown how the entire solar system is changing and how in fact most planets are changing far more than Earth is right now. But Uranus was a bit of a question mark. Did its extra auroral activity suggest a juicing up of its meteorology as well? The answer now is yes. We've seen storms there, but it appears this one, or these ones, take the cake in our history of observations. The aliens on Neptune blame our carbon emissions and global warming. But seriously, that makes Earth the least changing sphere from the Sun to Uranus. Right back to Earth spots. Did I mention quakes earlier? How about that right as the tropical storm is overhead? Really hoping you guys heard yesterday's fly on the wall upload to the website for this one. And as the records show, they downgraded this one as well. In other quake news, a tremor shook Alberta, leaving some without power, including a gas plant that had to do a burn-off of the excess. What makes Canada Canada is that the gas plant themselves called the government and asked for additional air quality monitoring because they're actually concerned about the local residents. Last article of the day, shades of last year's crew after crew getting stuck in the Antarctic sea ice. This time, the Halley Station lost power as a record low was recorded in that part of Antarctica. Now that Elong is at Japan, we've got Ginny, Izzy, and Julio about to swing north of Hawaii, but not without delivering a major rain event and landslide risk. In Australia and New Zealand, we've got to almost look to the Antarctic coastline for the central low drawing that convergence up between nations. New Zealand on deck, Tasmania is shivering double low in the North Atlantic has drawn its convergence south here. We've had flooding reports in England. Some bad storms in Norway should be spreading out even more. Two fairly weak convergences in the U.S. today will strengthen slightly, making storms from the plains to the east coast where we could see some flash flooding as well. No other severe warnings here. Folks, yet another example of a drop in solar wind speed in yellow, under 300 kilometers per second, indicating the weak sun and allowing the particles, the density, to bunch up and deliver unusual readings. Right at about the 400 mark UTC, we took a huge flux of particles, but did so in a wave that was very, very slow. A few hours later, we did have a slight speed uptick that dinged the BZ southward and caused a bit of instability that we can see more on the sensitive space weather metrics. Solar flaring? Esa no es la respuesta correcta. We got nothing and the sunspot number is dropping as well. We do have a new little active region to the south that is born beta and will watch develop throughout the day. The mature grouping up north is perfectly separated magnetically and lost about 10% of her size in the rear. So we've got the two southern polar coronal hole extensions and sort of a wide area up north. We're seeing the coronal fields in blue shifting to let the incoming negative opening down south breathe a bit while blocking more of the positive north. Those southern openings are decidedly more powerful. Sunspots coming in behind the limb, plasma dancing and popping as they leave the earth-facing disk. The sun is quiet, just about ready for that 70-year nap. Shots of our star to close, eyes open. No fear at 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.